Welcome everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to uh, have you all back. I mean, uh, the summer break. I hope you enjoyed it and that um, back in energy for um, the next part of this uh, Breakfast in Science. Uh, we, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Gabriel Girard, who is a research staff scientist in CIBM in the signal processing module and in the Shuri VPFL section. And uh, he's also a postdoctoral uh, researcher at the SHUV. And so he will be sharing with us on the cortical connectivity in the, in the macaque brain, uh, a comparison of diffusion tractography and histological tracing data. Thank you, Gabriel. Go ahead. Thank you, Pina. So today uh, I want to discuss diffusion tractography and validation, and in particular, a comparison of the structural connectivity estimated with diffusion MRI and from histological tracing data. So please uh, feel free to stop me during the presentation for a short uh, clarification. So let me briefly start with the diffusion tractography. So diffusion MRI is sensitive to the microscopic displacement of water molecules in a free medium, like in this jar, water molecules move uniformly in all orientation. However, in the brain, in particular in white matter, the white matter, the water molecules move um, primarily in the orientation of the axon and faster in the orientation of the axon, which allowed us to, uh, from this phenomena, to estimate the orientation of the axon in every voxel of the white matter. From this, um, here's, a, for instance, a coronal section of a human brain. You can see in every voxel of the brain the main orientation of the white matter fibers, and tractography will connect those local orientation to form uh, streamlines, which approximate the trajectory of the white matter fibers in the brain. So if we repeat this process millions of times, we can obtain millions of streamlines that describe the brain structural connectivity. And from these streamlines, we can segment a subset of streamline corresponding to known white matter structure, uh, which will, for instance, later be used uh, to study changes in presence of uh, pathology. However, over the past few years, there were reports of poor specificity of diffusion tractography. In particular, in this paper of the diffusion community, author reported that on the realistic phantom, 46% of streamline were wrong. Among them, 36 were uh, connecting unconnected region, and 10% did not connect anything. Uh, overall, tractography produced four times more false positive connection than existing true positive connection. And to quote the author, this demonstrates the inability of current state-of-the-art tractography algorithms to control for false positive. So not very exciting news for tractographers, but at least space for improvements. And one of the big challenge for tractography is the so-called bottleneck problem. So in this figure, on the left, you see two bundles with their local orientation. And the challenge for tractography is that there's a single fiber orientation in the central section of the, of the data set. So tractography will likely reconstruct all possible pathway. Among them, two will be the true positive one, but two will be false positive connections. And this was observed by the, the author of the previous study in a large phantom where you see for instance, in this region of the white matter, in red and, and white, up to five different white matter bundles. But when you look at the signal from diffusion MRI, we have one or two peaks in the same voxel. So those uh, fiber uh, population overlap in the same direction. And if we look in the real uh, brain in a similar um, area, we also have one to two peaks. We don't know how many uh, valid bundles there are, obviously, but we can think uh, there's maybe more than, than one or two. So, um, so in this in the study that we'll be discussing today, we wanted to quantify this in more details uh, on real data. Especially, we will be looking into the intrahemispheric connection of an ex vivo monkey brain. So, this work was just published to NeuroImage. So, please uh, have a look at the paper if you uh, if you are interested. So in this work, we use a collection of retrograde tracer injection studies located mainly in the parietal and frontal area of the monkey brain. We have a total of uh, 59 regions injected once or more um, with tracer that, that form a total of uh, 1,711 different pairs of, of region. Um, so this connectivity matrix on the 
on the right is, uh, is our ground truth, uh, and it's a symmetrical uh, matrix. So the question is, can tractography correctly classify pairs of ROI if they are connected or unconnected? So to do that, we use um, high quality, high resolution ex vivo diffusion data set. Uh, we have approximately a thousand diffusion uh, measurements for this data set acquired at 0.5 millimeter isotropic resolution. And we segmented on this, uh, on this very brain the 59 cortical area that were uh, described and injected in the, in the literature. So we have the diffusion data, we have the parcellation, now we can test uh, tractography. So to do that, we use uh, the state of the art for uh, local fiber orientation estimation, which is called the multi-shell, multi-tissue CSD algorithm. We also tested the, the standard or the, the, the diffusion tensor model, a previously standard, let's say, for tractography, um, uh, modeling for the diffusion orientation. We uh, tested um, several tractography methods, deterministic and probabilistic approach, mainly the, the, the method available in the DiPy and the Matrix 3 uh, software packages. And we also tested uh, various uh, state-of-the-art new uh, tractography methods that were proposed in the past few years, which uh, inject additional prior to constraint tractography and hopefully produce more accurate results. So for the diffusion matrix construction, um, the connectivity value in this uh, matrix on the right is defined as the number of streamline connecting two ROIs over the total number of streamline connecting any of the two ROIs. So in order to um, compare this matrix with the ground truth uh, track tracing connectivity, we need to binarize this matrix to identify which region is connected and which is not based on the diffusion data. And now the question is, what is the optimal connectivity value uh, to define what is a connection? So to do that, we, we started with uh, our diffusion um, connectivity matrix. And uh, if we set the threshold high enough that higher than any value in the matrix, essentially we say from the diffusion point of view, nothing is connected. And if you do that, everything in green, in dark green here, will be correctly predicted. That, that's the true negative connection. That's the, the brain area that are not connected. So tractography will be right on, on all of these, but obviously it will miss all the true positive connection here, um, show as false um, negative uh, in, in the dark uh, red voxels. And now we can start lowering this threshold. And as you see, the green, the bright green uh, voxel or the true positive correctly identified with tractography and the bright red or the false positive. So um, connection that shouldn't, be, shouldn't exist. And you can build this truck curve where we essentially for each threshold, we get the sensitivity and the specificity of, uh, of one of the tractography algorithm. And this gives us an overview of the quality of the uh, prediction of the connectivity for one tractography algorithm. So here, the, the star uh, marker right here um, highlight the optimal threshold value for this algorithm. Here, the optimality is defined as the sum of the sensitivity and the specificity. Um, and obviously, if the threshold is, is zero or even below zero, we say essentially that everything is connected. In this case, all the true positive will be correctly identified but we also commit a lot of false positive um, connections. So th there's a sweet spot here where we want to find the threshold uh, that predict the most accurately the, um, the connectivity. So if we do that with all the, the 15 pipeline, we get this, this actually very crowded uh, figure of the rock curve for all, uh, all algorithms. So just to better visualize them, if I start with the, the diffusion tensor approach, um, the area under the curve is a good indicator of how good um, an algorithm is, is performing. The diffusion tensor is not so, uh, so great. Uh, as you can see, the specificity is quite high, so around 0 0.9, but the sensitivity is, is very low for the diffusion tensor. If we look now into probabilistic uh, approach, uh, they are slightly better uh, for most of them, but again, they, they show similar pattern as the um, the diffusion tensor where the sensitivity is low, but its specificity is high for the optimal threshold. 
Now, if we look into probabilistic approach, we have a much better result. Actually, the, the best prediction were from probabilistic approach. And uh, most of them look quite similar with all the optimal threshold giving similar sensitivity and specificity. And just to, to, to finish with the one, one last method, this is a, the global tractography approach, which was um, proposed to, to, um, uh, to, to push some of the limit of standard uh, tractography. And this show intermediate results, so similar, a bit in between deterministic and probabilistic. So overall, well, what we, we can uh, see from that is that probabilistic tractography with a proper thresholding perform better than most other tractography algorithm, but all the variation of those algorithm injecting additional prior don't show uh, a lot of differences, but some algorithms stand out uh, as being on the top of uh, being having higher uh, both sensitivity, sensitivity and specificity. Okay. So now if we zoom in, in one, um, one of the better performing method with optimal thresholding, we can also uh, compute the sensitivity and specificity per ROI. So the classification task here is for each ROI to identify which of the 58 other ROI is, is connected to. So this provided with a special distribution of sensitivity and specificity on the cortex. Um, although it's relatively uniform, you, you can see some area that stand out with low sensitivity and low specificity. And I would like to draw your attention to those uh, two area here, area uh, F2 and area 12. So this false positive uh, is the false positive with the IS uh, connectivity score in the matrix for this algorithm. So this is the first false positive that will be created by lowering the threshold as I was doing uh, earlier. So as you can see, this bundle, this bundle is dense. It looks very real, but it connects to area that are not connected, area 12 and area 32. But looking around this bundle, we can find other true positives that agree with the ground truth that uh, share a similar area. And actually, if we look into the volume shared by those true, true positives, we can see that on, this is the, the false positive color with the color of the two true positive. See the scient uh, voxel or segments here are where both fascicles overlap in a similar orientation. So we can imagine that this false positive is actually a segment from the blue fascicle merged with the segment of the green uh, fascicle. And the story is very similar for this, this bundle. It's the same area 12 here connecting now area 9L. And we have the same true positive in blue and this now uh, true positive in, in green connecting area 46 and, and 9. And again, you can see the overlap in, in cyan between those two, um, those two fascicle, again, creating this, this false positive. This is another very large fascicle uh, false positive uh, now that connecting area F2 and S1. And interestingly here, we have two true positive that both connect uh, M1, so F2 to M1, and then M1 to S1. And you can see, instead of going in the gyrus and connecting the cortex, tractography correctly follow the incoming direction of the other bundle, creating this huge bottleneck uh, just below area M1. And, and the last one, just uh, another example, this one with the short uh, U-shaped fiber connecting area F2 and uh, area 8. So this is, is incorrectly connected, but you have those two true positive and you can see below uh, the principal sulcus, uh, we have the two uh, fascicle that are essentially aligned in the same direction. And again, tractography incorrectly merging segment of the, of, of the two true positive fascicles. And uh, one other thing, one other type of error we notice is the false negative. So the false negative are especially hard to visualize. But here you can see those uh, streamline, that's red streamline in the figure. Um, those uh, are actually in a false negative connection, but it was not identified as connected because the threshold for the connectivity was higher than this amount of streamline. So too few streamline to be identified as a, a true positive. But again, we can find true positive fascicle in green and blue that overlap for most of the trajectory of the few red streamline that we find. And you can imagine that if we start tractography in those voxel covered by the green and the blue uh, uh, fascicle, 
that are very dense and very very well reconstructed you can imagine that tractography will follow the dominant direction and might miss um, some of the direction that allows to connect on this long uh, trajectory so some uh, concluding uh, remark um, tractography show good agreement with the tracer data with an average sensitivity across all uh, methods of 061 and a specificity of 076 using the optimal thresholding. And overall, 76% of the streamline in this network were having endpoints and location that agree with the tracer data. So in this, this framework for, for comparing uh, probabilistic and deterministic approach, uh, uh, can be used to improve the, the meta development. Here we just uh, have some uh, some results. We observed that overall uh, probabilistic approach outperformed deterministic method and using additional prior show better performances, but it's not uh, a striking uh, results. Um, so uh, th those results with the false positive especially suggest that the white matter orientation are not enough uh, to accurately reconstruct all the true positive without also producing false positive bundle, uh, at least in this uh, monkey brain uh, network. And I just want to end with some limitation of this analysis. Uh, the first is that we study endpoint connectivity only. Uh, so including the whole trajectory will likely increase the false positive bundle count. Uh, moreover, most of the true positive uh, that we found in this, uh, this subnetwork uh, also add a few streamline with erroneous trajectories, so streamline that could eventually, uh, we could think form uh, invalid bundles. And finally, as I said, we focus on a very uh, large network, but a network limited to one hemisphere, which does not include the corpus callosum, which is perhaps the biggest bottleneck in the brain. So it, it might be a slightly easier and sub-network than the whole brain uh, connectivity estimation. So on this, I would like to thank you for uh, your attention, and I will be happy to take some, uh, some questions. OK, thank you very much, Gabrielle, for the interesting talk. And um, any questions from the audience? This is the time. Uh, yes, I have one question, Gabrielle. Yes. Uh, so it's about the uh, page uh, 21. So I'm, I'm curious to know like, what is the, the number of streamlines below which you're likely uh, to miss the connection between two regions? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good question. It's a tricky question. Um, if you look, uh, each algorithm has a different threshold. And this depends essentially on the how many, uh, this depends on the way streamline are reconstructed, but also how many streamline you you did reconstruct and um and what we observe is that overall deterministic method tend to have much lower threshold so if you would um threshold to zero with deterministic method you will be close to the optimal threshold while if you do that with um, a probabilistic approach you will be uh, very far out so actually i will just jump to an extra slide so here, uh, it, it's, a bit, it's a bit crowded, but it's, this is for all the tractography algorithms. And the first column is the sensitivity and specificity for the optimal threshold. And the first six um, bar and the green, the, actually the blue and the green one of probabilistic method. And the last column is with zero thresholding. So including, if, if there's a one streamline, the pair of ROI will be considered connected. And what you see is that um, the, for instance, the specificity of the, the deterministic method here in, in red is much higher than uh, the probabilistic method. While if you threshold optimally, you get something that is much higher for uh, probabilistic approach. So what I'm trying to say is essentially the threshold up, the thresholding is not so important for deterministic method. There's fewer, um, connection with few streamlines that are wrong, but for probabilistic approach is quite important. Um, the, the optimal threshold, you cannot know it if you don't know the ground truth, but we try just setting a threshold at 1% and 0.1% uh, of, the, the, of the value, of the connectivity value, and uh, this show 
fairly good result uh, compared to, it's very close to the optimal threshold. threshold in. But this varies from algorithm to algorithm. That's, that's, that's not easy to set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions from the audience? I have a question. Um, yes, Mary. Mary talking. Um, thanks, uh, Gap. Uh, very nice presentation with very uh, nice figures, as always. Um, so I'm not uh, aware of this tracing that you use from the kind of histological image. So if I understood correctly, you are dealing here with thresholds and so on, because what you get is information is, are you connected or not? But I was wondering what it would be as well amazing if can you from this tracing image get something like the real number of connections or how strong you are connected and then try as well to see how well this is inferred by algorithms. Like I understand that algorithms give you strong bundles and not really fibers, mm -hmm. but have a notion uh, of how strong it is or yeah. Or something more fuzzy. Yeah, th that's that's a, also a very good point. We we use a very simplistic definition of connectivity, which is a binary. Is actually the, for the tracer was injected in one region, and we looked was there any cells labeled in any other region of the brain? If it was there, we say those two regions are connected, right? And there are a few paper in the literature over the past maybe five or a bit more uh, years where uh, people have tried to essentially start tractography exactly at the seed of the tracer and look if the tractography agree, the streamline count, for instance, or, or other metrics, agree with the number of cells. So could you predict the number of label cells from diffusion tractography? And it, the results are not too bad overall, um, but that's, that's very difficult to do in a very quantitative way. One of the main reasons is that the tracer is unidirectional. Usually you will inject the tracer and it will either be a retrograde tracer or anterograde tracer. So you will miss half of the connection. In many areas of the brain, as far as I understand, uh, connection are quite uh, symmetrical. It's not the case everywhere, but let's say overall. So it's not a, a, a big, big issue, but tractography is always bidirectional. You cannot specify the direction of the connection with tractography. So that, that's difficult. Um, that's one of the limitation and now we are thinking of doing injection with both interrogate and retrograde tracers so you could have we could have at least all the connection so that will remove one of the confounding factor uh, but the idea with this analysis was to use we didn't trace any uh, brain specifically for this analysis this is really a literature review of the connectivity and for because we did that we have access to a very large network I think uh, as far as I can I can uh, in, uh, see, this is the very the largest network that was used to test tractography. We have almost 2,000 different connections. So when you do specific injection site and connectivity analysis, you are limited to very mm. few bundles. So it was a bit of a compromise in this case, but the, yeah, I, I think we need to go there now. The next step is to have ideally a large network, at least a few injection sites, bidirectional tracing, and see if tractography can tell you Maybe not necessarily the number of cells, but something proportional or correlated mm -hmm. to the number of label cells. Yeah, kind of a proxy of the measure. It doesn't have to be exactly a measure. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Gap. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? We have three minutes. Uh, yes, I have another question. Yes, please. So it's um, it's about the so it's about the slide where you present the different uh, performance of the in the row curve of the algorithms. So you, you mentioned that sometimes you inject some prior. Uh, so what kind of prior it is, for example? Uh, it, there's different thing here. Um, actually, those prior were used for the probabilistic approach. So if you just just try to go through the names. So DiPi probabilistic and MRTX IFOD2 will be the standard algorithm that you, you will find in most, uh, most publication, I would say, uh, using tractography. So recently, the, this, this particle filtering tractography use uh, an ACT, use um, information from the T1 image on the nature of the tissue. So essentially, you give the tractography partial volume estimation map of the CSF white matter, gray matter, for instance, estimated with uh, FSL fast or other tools. And you use that to constrain tractography in the white matter and change when streamlines stop 
and continue essentially. And this was shown to be both for ICP and NTFT to improve overall uh, the results. Mm -hmm. So this is one, so all, all the, the, the algorithm you see uh, with PFT and ACT use information from the T1. And then uh, the set algorithm is uh, something that was proposed last year, which used the shape of the brain to guide tractography near uh, at the boundary between the white and the gray matter. If you allow me just to jump back to this uh, figure here, this is this, this algorithm actually. Uh, you see this, the, first, um, the first white line so this is the cortical layer, the, the, the surface between the gray and the white. And what you do in this algorithm, you use the shape of the brain that kind of, uh, you use um, a surface flow algorithm, you smooth the cortex, but only inward, and you follow the direction of the vertex of the mesh for a very short distance. And this short segment can be used for tractography to guide the streamline propagation when you're near the cortex. So this it's a way to use morphology, the morphology of the cortex to guide tractography in, in, in those voxels that are actually very tricky for tractography. Uh, and maybe just one, one last uh, method is this commit and sift uh, approach where you, you use tractography and you model, you use the streamline as uh, a way to uh, model this diffusion signal and you find, given a model of the diffusion signal and the white matter fiber, you try to explain the signal given tractography. And with doing that, you can remove some of the streamline and you remove some bias in the density doing this, uh, this filtering. Uh, results are not so much different in this uh, analysis, especially because we are looking at binary connectivity and this is not exactly for, for this reason they were designed, uh, but they show a lot of potential eventually. Uh, or reducing false positive and improving uh, tractography overall when connected. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much. I will, if, you're, if you have other questions, please feel free to um, either through the chat or through email. Um, you know, these, this is really the opportunity to uh, exchange and we may not be able to ask all the questions right now. So thank you very much. Uh, once again, Gabriel.